we're here outside the Carpolis Museum in Santa Barbara with Holly Loheis, um, who's going to be speaking at TEDx Santa Barbara this weekend, and we're getting a little minute to talk to her after she rehearsed for her talk. And Holly is uh, going to be doing a talk on pygmy seahorses, coral reefs, and us, making the connection for a more sustainable future. And um, we're speaking to her um, in relation to Fielding's doctoral concentration on leadership for social and ecological sustainability. <laughs> okay, so I just have a few questions for you, Holly. Sure. And I wanted to ask you um, if you could talk a little bit about what's the premise of your talk that you're going to be giving at TED. Sure, absolutely. I, well, I work with Jean-Michel Cousteau, and as the oldest son of Jacques Cousteau, Jean-Michel kind of continues the idea of what his father really created in all of us, that it comes with an intimate connection that we then find a sense of caring to protect. So as a marine biologist and as a diver with Jean-Michel for over 20 years, I've seen the best of humanity when it comes to ocean conservation and protecting important species. I've also seen the worst of humanity and just some of our wasteful lifestyle choices and kind of our, our throwaway mentality and really that the ocean is sort of an out of sight, out of mind. So I had a, a wonderful opportunity with Jean-Michel and his team to film pygmy seahorses in Papua New Guinea. So part of my talk is just to take the audience on expedition and to take them underwater on some beautiful healthy coral reefs and, and let them have this intimate connection with pygmy seahorses. They're really hard to find and we are very fortunate and I work with a really talented team of cinematographers and photographers and so I get to showcase their beautiful work in my TED talk and let the audience just have that magical moment with pygmy seahorses and talk a little bit about their you know their unique anatomy and their sex life which is really really cool to see horses in general and um, and then talk about the state of the ocean and, and the threats facing coral reefs today and as the most threatened ecosystem on our planet coral reefs we are losing a tremendous amount of biodiversity so my whole hope is to get people inspired about the beauty of coral reefs um, fall in love with pygmy seahorses and then go home and think about, you know, throw away plastics and sustainable seafood and what can they do today a little harder to better protect the ocean. So it's just making those connections. Absolutely. That's one of the things I wanted to ask you is if you have specific advice uh, for people who we know the ocean's in peril, we want to help, you know, what can we do to sort of not feel helpless in the face of this right now? Well, we're fortunate where we live in Santa Barbara with a, just a beautiful ocean in our backyard of the Santa Barbara Channel and the beautiful Channel Islands. So I think we're very fortunate to have a lot of great educational resources available. So really just to highlight and, and give people an incentive to, to find out what you could do individually and the simple things are is just to eliminate single-use plastic is one of the most important things. Um, sustainable seafood, we've got some wonderful fisheries here in our Santa Barbara Channel and so support the local sustainable fisheries, go to restaurants that are now ocean friendly restaurants. Um, there's a lot of things we could do and those simple choices we make every day really add up to a tremendous positive uh, wave of the future where we hope to go with ocean conservation. Wonderful. Thank you. So Fielding um, is involved a lot with the social sciences and I wanted to ask what suggestions might you have for researchers in the social sciences, particularly those interested in social and environmental justice um, in relation to the kind of work that you do? Mm, that's a great question. I wish, uh, can I go to school? Can I go to your program? <laughs> we love that. Uh, so my background is marine biology, so I come from, with, you know, wearing the hat of the scientists right. and, um, you know, sometimes we think it's just so obvious, come on, we, don't we, have, we have to all do this and right. we forget about those, those social social uh, decisions um, and that interactions and that um, I think really we spend a lot of our time with education with kids mm -hmm. because our whole goal is just to get kids out in nature sure. and I think it's with that intimate connection those inquisitive minds that sense of curiosity that we all have we a lot of us have lost it in our, our days um, but to go back just to the simplicities of really being interconnected to a natural world and what does that mean to you know just appreciate the beauty around you from the natural world and so we spend a lot of time in with kids and our whole program is called the ambassadors of the environment and I'll talk a little bit about some of the, our, our 
kind of the key lessons from nature that we really try to teach sustainability and the uh, ocean is a great teacher and we just facilitate that process with kids sure. and so I, I think socially my whole push is for a more ocean literate society and um, I think if people just had that sense of you know what is their connection to the ocean and what the ocean gives us and, and what we can do to better protect the ocean. Great. Yeah. You know, you mentioned ocean as a teacher, and I was we were noticing recently that um, scientists were exploring a deep sea volcano mm. and, and to help us kind of understand possible oceans on other planets, which is really interesting. I was wondering if you can talk a little bit about what can our own oceans sort of tell us about the greater world out there, uh, having explored them yourself. Right. Well, I, I, I think what we could appreciate is there's still so much more to explore. So even as a, a biologist who has spent most of my career as an explorer and on part of an expedition team, we have still just barely scratched the surface when it comes to our total understanding of just a simple ecology of our connection to the ocean. And you know, off of Monterey, they're discovering new species almost on a daily basis in the deep seas off the Monterey Canyon. And, and that's just so exciting to think that there's still so much to explore and to learn and really to a value. And I think what what is a little nerve-wracking is we tend to extract more than we even really fully understand. So um, some of my own personal experiences is where we were diving in areas where we were extracting oil from depths where we do not even have basic scientific knowledge of some of these deep sea areas where we're extracting raw materials or natural resources. So I think part of the big push that I talk about and there's some many great TED talks about the importance of marine protected areas because we are indeed over 100 years behind when it comes to conservation in the ocean um, as we are on land. So we have a long ways to go to better protect the ocean and we, we know there's great science, wonderful research being done by UCSB and many other institutions about the value of marine protected areas as a win-win for everybody. Even those who make a living extracting resources from the ocean, you could, you could do it in a sustainable way. So that's the whole push of sustainability. Wonderful. What, yeah. what do you mean a hundred years behind? So I guess I mean um, our first national park was created in what, 1870 something. Like something. Yeah. yeah, the Yellowstone. Um, I don't have that year off my tip of my pen. And it, Dr. Sylvia Earle was, was part of NOAA when we first started to establish uh, national marine sanctuaries. And the first one was in the 1970s. Hmm. And on land, we protect over 18% of our lands as national parks and wilderness around the world. And in the ocean, it's less than 6%. Wow. But just 10 years ago, it was less than 1%. So we've made big improvements, but I think we have a long ways to go. And, and some of the wonderful research being done at UCSB, um, some people will say we need to be protecting 25 to 30 percent of our oceans to be able to extract it in a sustainable way. And when I say extract, I mean fisheries and other um, natural resources. Well, we're looking forward to your talk. Thank Thanks you. So much for your time. My pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah, thank you.